Welcome everyone, this is SG Geek. So today I'm going to continue my study of this build. It wasn't that easy. Initially when I opened it, I thought it would be kind of uh, straightforward, right? But uh, I had to pause the recording and go back uh, to research about the parts and all this. So um, there's a lot of things that I learned that probably will benefit you guys. Maybe you can see that he cut off a bit of the board and removed the USB connectors. So he used the, all these test pads below to connect the peripherals. Uh, he also removed a little part of this. I think you have to be careful when you're actually doing this. You might remove a, a few of the connectors here too. He uses the Kade screen like the one up. I have a Kade screen here. And this is the 2017 July edition. And as you can see here, actually it, it doesn't actually fit into the Game Boy case. If you can see... Oh, my kid is crying. <laughs> Give me a minute. Yep. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, don't pull my camera. And I'm back. There's actually, uh, oh my god, the kid is here again. Oh. The kid is back. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, so we're back again. You can see that this is the 2007 February edition. So this is the one that you should get if you want to use the Kurday screen. The Kurday screen has this uh, HDMI bridge, right? And this is actually a little bit taller than the one up one so uh yeah so the one up specifically made uh this connector so that can shorten the profile of uh the lcd and the raspberry pi right but this guy didn't have like that luxury so he um he used the original one and what he actually had to do was he had to strip parts of the edges away so these are the mounting sides, so it's not it doesn't really matter. So that the curved edges of uh, these will fit. And he also had to cut off the display connector here. Because when you cover it up the USB is blocking it. Now let's look at the power route. So how everything gets powered. This is um let's see. I went to do a Google search on this code. So it turns out it is each one is uh, 3500 milliamp and the voltage is 3.6 volts. They will be converted to 5 volts through this. So this is in parallel. So now they have uh, 7000 milliamp. Uh, so there's quite a lot of power. This is the positive end of the battery and it's going to the switch. And for the power lines, the positive uh, is connected to with the yellow one. Okay, so and the ground is the white one here. Okay, so these two are connected to the ground. So, what are the two lines? One of them is connected to this battery LED indicator. So this is going to measure how much battery is left and display color. So I have no idea what chip this is. So you have to attach a RGB LED. Then the yellow side is connected to this. So this is a, a micro USB charging circuit. It is charging at 5 volts, 1 amp. Yeah. So charging this battery probably takes something about 2 to 3 hours. Now we are here. So there's a micro USB, it charges. And uh, this micro USB connects to LCD controller, common ground surface. I believe that's how he did it. I cannot be 100% sure yet, but uh, let me show you how he connects this. You can see he is actually connecting it directly 
to the surface of the board. So this is a common ground PCB. I think he is uh, he's just scratched the surface of this board and connected a copper wire here. But there's something interesting about this also. This usually for common ground PCB, it is not like connected to uh, when they scratch the surface is usually not connected to anything but I went to do a close-up on the 2017 edition okay and this is the part that he scratch and actually there is there is some sort of a line here so I believe he specifically chose this place, right? He scratched this, and this is where probably one of the power runs through. Although uh, whether or not it is actually true, I have to test it out. So where does the positive part go? This terminal. So this ensures that this uh, whatever goes through here is going to output a steady voltage of five volts. And this is very important because of the way he powered the Raspberry Pi. Usually, uh, when you talk about powering the Raspberry Pi, you will use these two terminals. PV2 and PV5 are usually how you power the Raspberry Pi. But there's also an alternative way to power the Raspberry Pi that is the using the GPIO pins. And this is a more dangerous way of powering a Raspberry Pi because it always has to output 5 volts. If uh, it powers more, it could potentially fry your Raspberry Pi. So proceed with caution. Uh. The 5 volts is powered from uh, pin 2. So I believe he uh, as he just route, uh, made sure that the LCD board had 5 volts and through the GPIO pins, he powered the Raspberry Pi. Which is kind of smart and dangerous at the same time. A lot of times to mount uh, components like uh, the ports, we will need to 3D print stuff to prop them up and all that. And all this guy did was he just put a bit of solder on the less less important parts of the build. Yep, you can see here. So he just put a copper copper wire and just soldered it to this part and. For this, it's just like melted part of the plastic and just just place the copper copper wire like through the plastic. And the thing is, it holds pretty well. Yeah, so the thing is, it holds pretty well. And same for this too. He used like really really stiff copper to to stick them in. So yeah, it's like actually pretty firm. Maybe now we can look at the audio. So, so the audio he simply used this audio jack output okay which is also smart one up requires the sound from here but if you need to use sound from here you sort of need to uh, find a way to bridge so one up used like a three and a half uh, mm audio jack to bridge in fact, somehow used, using their PCB tried to bridge here which is uh, a method also but uh, this guy just like soldered the two left and right channels together with a, probably a copper wire and then he joined them to this uh, volume wheel so it's actually similar so what he did is he just he snapped off uh, one of the one of the channels so you snap off uh, pin 2 and pin 4 and he knows that uh, 1 and 3 are connected so he just connected 1 and 3 and scraped a section of the the PCB and just mounted this thing and grounded it at the same time which is pretty cool and uh, so what else uh, there is a little PCB here there's no no like audio amplifier so which is why the sound actually did, doesn't sound very good so he's just taking the raw input from uh, the audio output going in here 
and powering it uh, from this okay so it this is outputting 5 volts and one of its connected look at the white one is actually connected to here so this is powering the audio and this is the ground going to the ground uh, ground through hole connector and these two are the outputs of one other channel so it's probably one output and one ground I don't know which one is which but uh, I think the right one positive I, I'm assuming the positive is combined channel and minus is the ground so you're going all the way down to the three and a half mm audio jack and then to the speaker so I did a little bit of googling and uh, this is going to output a steady voltage of 5 volts the negative and the white the white wire is connected to negative terminal and the positive is going to go ahead and power everything else I have no idea whether when they scratch a, the surface is it actually a required thing or is it just is he just trying to mess with us <laughs> or is it just using it for mounting things so sometimes it seems like he's mounting things sometimes it seems like it is actually useful I have no idea sometimes <laughs> okay so the white wire goes to the TNC boards top of the USB it's kind of weird like nobody does that and I think this is just to hold the wire and press like this hold hold this whole piece down okay and uh, so this now it comes to the part for this uh, GPIO or this tin C board and uh, buttons PCB so how is this powered this is powered by uh, the USB port here yep so he's using uh, the D, D plus and D minus and he's gonna put it here and there is a voltage here this is a 4 pin SCP uh, connector and is this connecting the ribbons and you can see here it is another one of those like uh, scratch scratch a uh, surface of the PCB and it's just used to mount this thing it's quite stable though which is kind of smart okay okay so let's see let's confirm this power output okay so it's outputting 4.87 487 I guess that's about the threshold that and it's quite constant if I hold it properly yep so it's 487 quite constant and not preferable of course it would be good to have something that can output exactly 5 volts or a little bit more um, okay now I have sort of have to check some of these uh, mountings whether are they used for ground or are they just um, used to hold this piece together. I'm a little bit uncertain if uh, this is actually connected to the ground and uh, is this the other ground connection up here. So when I checked for continuity, yeah, there's a beep sound. Yep, so this area is actually connected to here. Yep, so uh, the way they powered this LCD board is there's a connection going to the negative terminal of this going to this part of the board and the 5 volts the positive is powering through here okay hmm yeah I guess that's about it see here okay. this uh, pro micro board is powered by through this VCC this one with the knot is the ground so this 
is the common ground that you will be used for all the buttons. You can see these links uh, for the analog joystick here. Mm. L1, R1, L2, R2. Okay, so I've just uh, snipped off some wires and now we're looking at the PCB. So um, if you look at the wiring, so the uh, Pro Micro board is uh, soldered in throughout all this. So uh, I guess this is should be a common ground PCB, and these are uh, yeah correct. So uh, pins from the Pro Micro board is just going to go to different parts of mm, to the different buttons. Huh? yeah. I wonder why his positioning is off. Maybe it is a mistake. Yep. So he labels his board properly up, down, left, right. Select, start. Yep. This is the end of uh, my opening up my study of uh, the LCL build. Let me know in the comments if I got anything uh, mistaken or. Are there any suggestions on future videos? And if you have any uh, other video links that you can share with me, please post it on the comments so I can go and check them out. Remember to subscribe! Bye-bye!